Well hello everybody again. In the previous video we looked at extracting and pressing the sealed bearings in your front hub and on the non-drive side of your rear hub. In this video we're going to show you how to extract and press the bearing, the sealed bearing in your drive side of your rear hub, that one in there, and also on your free hub body, there's one at the front and one at the rear usually, so those two in there. So we can extract and press them. Now you'll need some of the tools that we used in the previous video, so go back if you haven't seen that, go back and check that out and get those bits, they're very cheap homemade bits. And you'll also need a bolt. <laughs> this is a little bit bigger bolt than used in the other video. Uh, our washer and three nuts, all of about three dollars worth. So you may even have them already in your shed or your workshop, so it'll cost you nothing then. So let's get on with it. Right, so this is the clutch area and the other bearing is sitting inside there, recessed inside. So we've got to get that one out now. Now the 8mm dyno bolt, you can either use a shorter one like this, or in my case, because the bearing is a little bit deeper, I'm using a longer bolt, longer dyno bolt. So you put that in, and that way you can hold the body and screw it in at the same time. Right, put that in, screw that up. Until it doesn't come out. Right, 40mm piece of poly. This piece, in there. And your hub with the dyno bolt facing down. Now this is the other dyno bolt, the same size without the bits on it. So just that. So you put the head and put it in the center. Make sure it's in the center. Now rather than hold it with your fingers and bash, you can use this brass piece and that in the center and that'll just hold it in the center like that. Don't forget the little nut, if you want to protect the thread on the dyno bolt, put the nut on like that, keep it fairly flush, and that's it. Now you just tap away. There we go. Now if you find that your dyno bolt didn't extract the bearing because it's in really tight, then go back to your long bolt that we used on the front bearing press, and we'll put that in backwards like that. Sometimes you can just hold it with your hand. Now remember, don't bash, just tap, because the bearing is seated in there nice and squarely. So only need small taps, a little bit at a time. And it will come out. Of course, the best way is on the block. There you go. And there's the bearing. So you put your small screwdriver, small flathead, in there. Just push it up a bit. The spring will come out like that. There's one pole. Be careful not to bend the spring out of shape. It should just fall out nicely. There you go. That's your three poles, spring, and the body. Now, with the cassette body, there's quite often there's two bearings, one here and one at the extremity. So, and they're usually pushed in in one direction. So, which means you can knock them out that way. Often there's a dust cap in the front. Don't worry, that'll get pushed out anyhow. So, let's take that out. Right. So we get our piece, poly. That inside there. Or you can do it that way, but this way holds it nicely. Now, again, the front axle press bolt, that in there, and tap. Yeah, it's all come out. Now you probably notice 
Now you might come so far, this one in particular has got a circlip in there. You see the two holes of the circlip? So you need to take the circlip out before the bearing comes all the way out. So there we go, it's a circlip. Right, so we'll continue hitting away at the bearing. Now if you had trouble getting that back bearing past the next lip with your bolt, use an extension of a socket set one of these and that'll drop in like that and it'll hold it nice and central and then just tap it out from there now if you've used a bit of force to knock that back bearing out chances are you're going to have to replace it because you've hit the inner race and you've damaged the bearing and it's rough. Rough. Needs replacing now. And we're going to pop them all into our cleaning unit. Remember our cleaner we made? So we'll just pop them all in there and give them a soak about half an hour will do. If you think the bearing's okay and just want to clean it, use a dental pick to get the seal out. Do the same with the other side. With the seals off, you can put it in your homemade cleaner. Using a stiff toothbrush, you can get into the area in there. You can see there's grease in there. And the pieces can come out. And there they are, nice and clean. And we've cleaned the seals as well. So there's the seals, nice and clean. When you check the bearings to see if they're any good, if they feel quite smooth, that's good. Spin it on one side. And turn it over and spin on the other side. It feels a little bit rougher on this side. Whereas this side is smoother. So this bearing should be thrown away and replaced with a new one. Now if your bearing feels nice and smooth and spins really well and there's no movement from the inner to the outer race give it a bit of a flex, then that bearing should be okay to use again. Grease, you'll notice one side of the bearing race can be already have a back seal that holds the bearings in, it's just plastic. You can just put a light grease, a bit of grease on that one and spread that around. That'll spread itself in. And then the other side where you can see the bearings, put a fair bit of grease on there. And spin it in. And that's it. Then you can put your seals back in. They should just press in like that. On one side, one on the other, and you're done. All done. Throwing all the other bits from the hub in the homemade cleaner. Little circlip, may as well. And there's our dust cap from the cassette hub. Right.
Right, next, the slightly larger bearing, we press it in through the drive side in there. So, grease. Always grease, a little bit of grease in there. All the way around. As a handy hint to have your grease in a syringe. If you want to get a syringe, go to your chemist or veterinarian supplies and they'll sell syringes. The hardest part is getting the grease in there. Right. And a bit of grease, of course, on the outside of the bearing. Right. Right, get your bolt. Now, the next size up washer, remember it's got to be slightly larger, so this washer here, so it covers nicely. On this, remember this bearing slightly larger than the other two, which were in the cassette body. So, put that washer on, the bolt, and the bearing. Right, so bolt in, it's a drive side, and on the non-drive side, get your plastic piece. Now this time, use your brass piece, remember the brass thread. Now screw it in to the black piece, or you can do it off the wheel. Now it doesn't have to be hard in there, just finger tight. So I put that on there. Now washer, largish one. As long as it covers that brass bit and that nut, and then you wind it in. Now, if you're wondering why I use that brass piece, remember you've got to hold everything central. So that's why that little brass piece is in there. So you get the bearing winds in nice and straight. Right, and again, you'll feel it. That's about it. I'm not going to go any further. So it's in place. Beautiful. Right, here's our nice clean cassette body and the bearing which goes in the back. So to push that in, you use a larger diameter bolt and a nut and a special shim, a little washer there. And that washer is exactly the same diameter as your bearing, your sealed bearing, so it covers the whole race just nicely and no, no none sticking out there. Right? So that's the sort of washer you want. And of course the washer goes on the bolt as well. So a little bit of grease on the inside. So the bearing slips in nicely. Right, a little bit on the outside of the bearing as well. That in place. Now your shim and the bolt. Then at the back of thicker washer like that. So that sits in like that. And then the nut. Note you need enough thread on your bolt because by the time that bearing gets through to here, to the end where it's supposed to be, you might have run out of thread here. So you might need to use quite a few washers. So here I'm going to use three all up. And if you find you still run out of thread, then what you can do is use your poly piece there. Put that on because it will butt up nicely to the cassette body flange there. And then you use a large washer. And then your nut. And then you can continue winding. Right, all ready to go. Now you need a socket for this end to hold onto the bolt head and a spanner or a ring spanner on for this end and you just tighten it up. Long everything central it should just press in, it's going in easily. Now it goes in, you can just feel it's just slipped past that collar. It'll be easy for a while. Now once you've passed that collar the bearing should just slip in. If you find that your socket is too thick and hits the cassette body and you can't get it in any further. Get two nuts, one here, and one here. So lock them together nice and hard. Right. 
Now hold this nut here. And then just the second one in there. Just undo it. And it will continue to pull the bearing in. This one's quite easy because it's gone in anyway. And you'll feel when it gets to the end, it'll be nice and tight. Right, all done. And the bearing is nicely seated inside there. Right, the bearing's in place. Now don't forget to put the circlip in. So we'll put that in. Just push it in. And down. Right, all nicely in place. Right, the next bearing, that one up there, the forefront. So again, just put a little bit more grease on that shim. Front bit. And a bit of grease on the outside of the bearing brace there. Right, so again, your bolt with that nice thin shim or washer. And there. And the brace. Now, don't forget your little spacer washer inside the spacer tube. So that goes on next in there. Now you should have plenty of thread. So you can just put a washer on. Just put a washer on. And the nut. And you can use your socket in there, spanner on there, and just wind it in. Simple as. It comes to a stop. That's it. And unwind it. Washer off. Bolt out, and the other washer as well. Go. and the bearings nicely pressed in there and the shim between them is exactly right as well because the bolts held it in place that's perfect dust cap don't forget to put the dust cap back in should just press in now for your spring and the poles it's actually simpler than you think just locate sometimes it's a marker like that and that means the open bit of the spring where it opens there goes and lines up with that marker there. I put one side on, just go around with your thumb, it slides on, it should just slide in place. So put your spring on first and then it's easy to just put the poles in. Now I do this dry because if, if you do it with uh, grease it's really awkward to get grease everywhere and sometimes things slip out of place. So I do it dry and then I re-grease it. So put the poles in. The way I put the poles in is I just get a small fillet head screwdriver, lift the spring a little bit and put the pole in underneath and it slips in. Beautiful. Show you again. Make sure you get the pole the right way, facing the right way. Screwdriver, lift the spring a bit and in it goes. Done. Now they should all spring nicely. Lovely, beautiful. Right. Next step is to get some grease in there. I find with a brush like this, just a small little paintbrush, put some in there and just brush it around inside. It doesn't need a lot, just a nice coating. It's about all you need, like that. And the same with the clutch. You can just put it on the brush. Make sure you get it inside with a spring is. You don't need too much, you don't want your clutch springs seizing up, not you don't want them sticking. Then get a small flathead screwdriver and just do it behind each clutch pin. Just leave that right out. And just put the brush inside there. And it will go in. 
right to do each one well that's it you got your bearings in put your axle through put your free hub body on your cogs on quick release axle through and you're ready to roll Still bearings are certainly easy to deal with why Shimano and sometimes Campagnolo use loose bearings? I'm not quite sure. Maybe it's a marketing thing. Maybe they can produce a product cheaper. But you try and source a cone for a hub that's over five years old from Shimano. Very difficult to source. So with that in mind, seal bearings are certainly a good way to go. I hope these two videos have been helpful for you in being able to either service or replace the seal bearings in your hubs at home. <laughs> Don't forget to go to OzCycle on Facebook if you need the details on how to make those tools for yourself. Well, leave your comments and criticisms below. Anything you want to know, anything I can help you with, I'll try and get back to every comment I can. By the way, I've got some exciting videos coming up. It's not just a plug. I genuinely have at least two that I know of that are going to be really unique. So keep your ears and eyes peeled for that. All right. I've got to go to a ride tomorrow, so I've got to get ready for everything, pack the bike and all that, so I'll catch you soon.